The inertia system comes in two cases. The first one is for screw insertion. The second one is the rods and set screws. Contents of your first case include three caddies. Three caddies 5.5, five, 6.5, five, five, and 7.5, or it can be a 7.0, or you could swap out a caddy and put in 4.5. You can determine which caddies that you want to put in there. Right now they are standard. The center one is loaded with the 6.5. It has the most screws. Contents in here. All two probes, straight and curved. Taps, in situ driver, sounders or feelers, screw inserters, and handles. Pick the handles you want to use. Rods are available in two styles. The straight from 35 through 80 and 5 millimeter increments, then 10 millimeter increments up to 150, then 200 and 400. Curved rods are in 5 millimeter increments from 5 through 90 and then an additional 100 and 110. A thin rod holder is available and a more sturdy heavy duty rod holder. Your middle layer is all your instrumentation starting with set screw holders, the set screw caddy, two linked reducers, the final torque tightener, there's two, you'll need one and one's a backup, torque limiting wrench, alignment tube, counter torque tube, a rod pusher, and a rod fork. The bottom of the pan is your in situ rod benders left and right, French rod bender, compressor, distractor. We're going to do a saw bones example of how to use all the instruments. Starting with our awl, we are poking into our pedicle to break the cortex. We're going to do a one level, so I'm going to pop two cortex in this case. Next is your probe, whether it is a straight or curved probe. The surgeon can find his path down the pedicle. The probes have laser mark lines so you know how deep you're going. Handles are interchangeable. So we can tap with a ratchet to tap the cortex and tap the bone. pole handles, feelers, and sounders are available in straight and curved. That will beat to all hell. The easiest way to load a screw is straight up. Align the screw until the hex lobe falls in. And you can see that our saddle is all the way to the bottom. Insert the sleeve and turn until it is tight. It will line straight up. By simply turning this, insert your screws. Unscrew your wheel with a spin. You can pop it out. I'm good. With a thin rod holder or any other rod holder, introduce your rod and you'll hear it click into the housing. Both sides clicked in. Caddy with two thumbs pushing it out. Set screw inserter is a stab and grab. Screws can be inserted freehand. It is strongly recommended to use the alignment tube 
cake. The alignment tube has a lip to stand the head up to get easy access. Dropping your set screw on is much quicker with that perfectly aligned. Persuasion is needed. There is a rod pusher. There is a rod fork. A rod fork can be used where the two posts go into the holes on the side of the housing. Lock it and rotate it for persuasion. A linked persuader can be used. Snap it over the housing with fingers, force it down, insert your set screw. To remove the link persuader, push on the thumbprint to pop it off and then you can pry it off. Simply twist. There's a thumbprint on each side where to pop that off. Pull on your torque limiting handle. Insert the shaft all the way up until the line is flush and release. Your counter torque has that same lip to help grab it and align it onto your set screw and onto your housing. Ensure that this black line is fully seated inside of the alignment tube. 90 inch pound torque. 90 inch pound torque. If rotation is needed or extra force, a stronger rod holder is a vice grip style, can be tightened or loosened. Rotate your rod as needed. Press to release. In the screw insertion case, there is in sight two drivers. If you need to raise or lower the screw, as well as head turners to orient and align up the housings.